Yes. Cross so we've got on there is a phyllo pastry, and we're just going to brush it with the clarified butter like so. Okay. Make sure it's nice and moist. Our tomatoes are going in here. Okay. Nicely seasoned. Okay, and then you put one more layer on top. You notice how I'm multitasking, yeah. chaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's another word You've for that. You've done that the whole week. It's like, yes. um, does she know what she's doing? She's just throwing <laughs> stuff in the pan. Okay, so we basically layer of butter, phyllo pastry on top. And this has to be done very quickly. You know, because like I said, you want to keep this covered so it doesn't dry out. And then, and be very liberal with the butter. Don't feel that, you know, to be stingy with it and make sure you put enough on it. Okay. How many layers are there all together? I'm just putting three. Okay. So I want it quite thin, but I want it to hold enough so that when I actually um, come to lift the tart up, it's going to have some base to it. And then we're going to cut it, get rid of this phyllo pastry here. Take that away. Okay, and then we're going to cut it into nice tart shaped pieces, like so. And we've a piece on our tray there, another piece there. And you notice I'm putting it butter side down, is again what I want to do. Put some more butter on top so it keeps nice and flat and smooth. And that goes in an oven for about 120, uh, 180, 200 degrees, probably for about five to eight minutes so it's nice and golden brown. Okay, so, mm -hmm. flames, mm -hmm. but as you can see, you start to, your sauce starts to break down, you get these beautiful tomatoes, they release all their juices. This would take about 40 minutes to cook out. So what I've done is I have a beautiful one ready here, as you can see, and we've finished it off, we've put some lovely basil herbs in there, and you've got this very thick ragu in a way, or a sauce um, that we can use on top of our filo. Angela, I, I wondered where you got your ideas for your recipes and, and who tastes the recipes? Um, taste, is, um, taste is basically, I do it with my sous chef and my head chef. We all taste certain dishes um, and then we run them as specials in the restaurant and certain customers will ask for general feedback and it's a liaison with your manager. Um, ideas, it's as much eating out. Believe it or not, it's doing shows like this in some respects. You know, no, but in the sense that, you know, artichokes and lamb, I wouldn't necessarily have thought to put it together yeah. and you do that. You know, so there's lots of, um, and you just get your inspiration like that. Going to other restaurants, I mean, this I have to credit um, a fantastic French chef called Joel Robichon, who is what, classed as one of the best in the world. He does, I, I ate this a tart similar in Paris yeah. <laughs> about four years ago, oh, and it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, mine's a lot more rustic, it's very sophisticated compared to mine, but it's just the idea of these thinly sliced pieces of mackerel. He puts parmesan and olives on the top, yeah. so it's a lovely combination. So. I think you can't reinvent the wheel. Mm. Basil, tomato go together. I don't think you need to be too... Um, that's my excuse, anyway, for not thinking about new <laughs> ideas. <laughs>